Welcome to Pure Entropy Podcast, presented to you by Entropy Studios. The podcast aims to unlock the mysteries of life and take you on a mind-expanding journey. Get ready to feed your curiosity, broaden your horizons, and explore the fascinating challenges of existence with interviews with different creators. So really excited to have on this podcast. Her name is Manushi Shah, and she has so many cool interests, but I'm going to let her speak about her interests, and we're going to excited to get to know her so let's get started why don't you tell us a little bit about your interest Manushi and you know how you got different things you do and what you're up to these days hey Sid thank you so much for having me on this episode I'm so excited to share my story and all my interests with you so yeah yeah why don't you tell us what some of those interests are I know your family's involved in the restaurant business. We'll touch a little bit on that. But besides that, too, I know you're into photography as well as I am and you love traveling as well. How did that how did that interest come to be or where did that start? So, yeah, well, growing up, my childhood was very was very different compared to compared to others. I always had a lot. I felt like I had a lot more going on. Besides just school and, you know, normal growing up things that we're used to, I was also involved in my family's business where I spent a lot of my time on the daily after school over there with my parents and just shadowing them and being around so many other people. Like you mentioned, we were in the restaurant, we're in the restaurant business. And so, you know, a lot of it involves like meeting with a lot of people interactive interacting with many different people on a daily basis so there's just so much more that I absorb from that experience and that's shaped me to who I am today and because of that you know I'm from a very like creative background my father is a professional chef and just being around him and seeing his creativity like spark that into who I am as well and Because of that, you know, I was always like a very creative soul too, not just around the hospitality and food business, but that sparked my interest in just being overly curious about life and wanting to learn many different things. I was very quiet growing up and the best way for me to express myself was after picking up a camera and I was able to capture different moments of my life capture different people and that just helped me express what I wanted to say and that was like my language and so I picked up on that from that you know I started traveling and as you know like that's also something that I want to incorporate more into my life and just open up my eyes to and it helps you learn a lot too. So when you picked up your the camera was it like like for me we had gotten the camera for my dad because he loves taking pose, po- he loves taking photos. But you might have seen like in our house. There's it's just filled with my dad's poses, which we get now. It's like in us too. But we got in the camera for his birthday, and we were like, "Use this, learn this. You know, it'll take cool pictures." And this was when like Nikon D thirty two hundred was like the camera to have. But nowadays, it's like completely. And he never got around to it because he was always busy, or he was like, "Oh yeah, I'll, I'll like look at it tomorrow. I'll learn it tomorrow." And it was in that summer that I was like, all right, he's not going to do it. Let me at least, I'm bored. Let me try something different and see how it goes. And that's when YouTube came to kind of find like, oh, you can learn everything about a camera. You can learn the technical aspects. You can just try, see how it works. And once I did like the first photo shoot just for myself for fun, and I was like, wait, maybe I'm actually good at this. Or like, if I keep doing this this summer, it's going to become something greater. So what was, what was like your experience when, taking your first photo or maybe was there like a moment that kind of said for you that this is really fun I want to do more of this right so I felt like the creative part of me was always there it was kind of embedded in into me you know from my dad and like the camera for me you know when I did my first few you know fun shoots whether it was like whether it was my family or just around our business or other people that kind of realized that I I had that knowledge it was very it was a very rewarding experience I had a lot of good feedback from it and also like you know even you like we didn't go to 
professional school for photography or take any professional courses or like that. It was just kind of naturally learned, right? We learned it by ourselves and kind of just kept practicing. But I think like being a good being a good photographer, you have to have that aesthetic sense embedded in you as well. Like you need to know what looks good. And as easy as that sounds, not everyone realizes that. And you also you also understand that even if you go out with friends and you're taking pictures and stuff, some of them will take some pictures and you know, you know that, okay, this could be styled a little bit better. So having that extra sixth sense is really is really important in this too. And this is something that good photographers, most good creative people have, even if it's like videographers as well. So I felt like I always had that aesthetic sense to it, which also helped me along the way. And it gave me the validation that I needed to know, like, I know that this looks good. And people accept that. And people were just sensing that and wanted more of that so that helped a lot too and I realized that back like towards the end of high school when I had saved up for my first camera and I started shooting with that that Canon 60 which I still have Canons are just too well keep they are a good cam I like their colors better than Nikon definitely yeah it's pretty solid but it reminds me in when I took that like the picture People will just be like, oh, like we all can do the picture. That was like the way, like everybody can take pictures. But it was only after a certain time, like a random stranger reached out and was, oh, how much do you charge for pictures? So I was like, charge? Yeah. What do you mean? And I was like, wait a second. Like, you think these are that good? So I definitely felt like imposter syndrome or just saying, no, like they're just being nice. But then I think it was like, it was even you or maybe a couple other people who were like, yeah. no, like try it out see what's like what's the worst that could happen yeah it kind of gave the push to try it out which lets you like try more things now especially right. it got me into reading because i had to learn so much about photography and there was no teacher it was just like it's up to you yeah and because of that i was like maybe reading is actually fun and i gave it another shot and thank god for audible like it's not sponsored but audible is amazing. yeah because of that my mom is telling me every day now like we see you reading her like what is wrong with you in like a good way because she knew that in high school i was like the reading the books for classes i would just be annoyed or i would spark notes it but i know you're interested in reading yeah and like early on was that something you've always wanted to do or was there some experience or seeing your dad or in your family it just got you in so I didn't know this early on, but, you know, dad told me like much, much later on that after seeing me, he revealed to me that he was also very much of an avid reader from a really young age. And if you ask any other like members of my family, like my sisters aren't into it. My mom's not into it. I wouldn't really hear about like my grandparents much being into it either, except for like my grandfather was all also very he loved books. He loved photography. He was crazy about the camera back in the day, like when the first camera was built and released. He was one of the first people like in the town, in the city he was in to buy that camera it's back in that day where it's like so expensive during like black and white, black and white photos were a thing. And he also had a like a whole studio set up in their house too, in the house that dad grew up in. And so I definitely got that from my dad and my grandfather, but even even my dad, like I relate to him a lot because the way I was growing up around him being in a shadow of his business, he did the same thing with my grandfather during their construction business and like real estate properties. So he was very active in that and he also wanted to learn a lot. He was a very curious personality. And he valued education and just knowledge in general. And so he loved books. I grew up around, like, I would be so excited when the Scholastic Book Fair would come to our school. Like, I would just go nuts. And right now, it's like every time I have free time, you'll find me in a bookstore, which you have multiple times. And it's just a fun time. And I feel like there's so much to learn. Like, that's the one thing our brain can never fill up. So... I find that very beautiful and I love that. What would you say to people who kind of still hate reading? And I know like we all know people right. who don't really enjoy it, especially is because from school, whenever I ask them, most of the, I was going to say hatred or like the dislike comes from. Being existence. forced to read. Yeah, being forced to read. Yeah. And so what would you tell like the younger 
generation or like people my brother's age or six years younger on why they should at least give it another shot or be interested in it as like better along. Right. So as like, if it's reading or anything else, you should find what works for you. You should find what your brain ex- accepts. If reading is not your thing, if books are not your thing, maybe you find your information elsewhere, whether it's it could be listening to a podcast or watching educational YouTube videos. Some people are a lot more are a lot more visual learners, which I feel like I am too in that way. But I also I also relate to reading and I connect with the words that are on those pages. And I feel like I can create those visuals on my own as long as it's something that I'm interested in. Right. But you should find what works for you. Even for me, like even, you know, I'm I'm an avid reader, but those those summer reading books that we were all forced to read wasn't something that I enjoyed. Even some of those books where I was like forcing myself to read them for that report that we had to write or for that group project we had to do as soon as those AP classes started that first week right, of school. So you should find what works for you. There's many books out there. There are many authors out there. Even let's say you're a fashion designer, find like designer books. You're going to you're going to definitely read that because you're interested in that. So don't like if you're wanting to start, but you hate it, find something that you're interested in. First, find three topics, you know, hone down on those topics, find books around that niche and start from there. And from there, practice will come naturally and you'll start picking up on books in all genres. That's pretty cool. I'd also say. If I if you read something that you eventually find interesting, tell one friend about it because you telling them makes you recall or just get excited about like this was so cool because X Y Z. And once you tell them, maybe your friend is also like, "Well, that was like interesting. I want to learn more about it." And you'll also remember it more because you kind of had to explain it in your own words, and which is like the best one of the best ways to learn rather than just you read it, you think you know, but then somebody asks you what was it about, which has happened before in the past especially like i don't know it's like what i just read and two days later it's like yeah i totally forgot that but if it's something you really want to remember and is of interest definitely share it with your friends it's something something you need to have yeah absolutely and especially in this day and age we are we are at that point where we're over consuming so many different things because we don't only just have books where you know for many many years for decades there were only books to gain knowledge from but now we have computers we have the tv we have phones we have different social media apps there's just so much out there and so over consuming so many different things sometimes it's hard to find relevancy in that so you should definitely definitely start small start from one category and then build yourself up from there yeah i want to touch on the over consuming point but then before we go there i want to I want to get your opinion on fantasy but or fiction versus nonfiction. What is your, if you have? Definitely nonfiction. I love picking up books where I can read about like success, success stories, right? So whether it's celebrities or highly influential people, that's usually my go-to category for books, especially at the time where I'm at in my life right now. That's what I kind of lean towards naturally because I'm at that like mindset where I just want to become better and better every day and find ways to find ways to learn more, to get more from this life. And the best way to do that is to learn from people who have made it. And the beautiful part of that is those stories are often the ugliest stories. They're often the ugliest stories because in order to be someone in life, in order to achieve something, not everything is butterflies and unicorns and sunshine you know there's so many hoops that you have to go through and a lot of people don't even know about that they see the end goal but they don't know the process you know many people say it's not about the destination but it's about the journey right and in order to know about that it's the journey that that person has to go through in order to become someone right you don't just get up there on a pedestal there's so many tests that you're given there's so many different rejections that people face and so for me the beauty is reading about those failures and learning from them and trying to implement them into my own life you know we there's there always comes a time where 
we're feeling, like you mentioned, imposter syndrome and whatever you're doing, if you're trying to do something, right? Or you feel, you just feel down. You don't have that, like, you don't have a good day every single day, right? Some days you wake up and you feel like, okay, none of this is going to work out well. Those stories that you read, they're there to remind you that if you keep going, if you keep focused and stay clear, stay clear on what you want, eventually you'll get there. But it doesn't just magically happen. You have to work for it. So because of that reason, I really, really, really lean towards like these success stories. And I just feel like that's the best way to learn. I think, yeah, exactly. in the messy parts, because you see they weren't just like these like gods or celebrities. There were also and are human beings that have also the same problems, but we just because they might have gotten the attention that it, they seem like out of touch or reach. But in those books, it's definitely like, oh my god, I like I also was interested in that the same age. Like that's so cool to know that the same person who I look up to now was is like started where I was or started is where I am or that's how they got into it. So even if like you said the days are tough and you have to look for the long term, maybe. If I kept doing it because it's enjoyable to me, I don't have to worry about other people expecting something from it. Right. For example, like this past year, one of my top books have been We Were Dreamers by Simu Lu. And for that, like that took me a while to get through just because it was a very heavy book. You know, it was a, a book about immigrants like Simu Lu having immigrant parents. He, he himself being an immigrant, too and the sacrifices that they went through. Now, you know, we also, like, both of us have immigrant parents, right? They came to this country, and they started fresh. And so the struggles that he portrayed in that, not only for his parents, but for him himself, right? He always wanted to be the best and prove himself to be the best son and give back to his parents. So there was a lot in there that people could learn from and that people don't even know about him. So it was very inspiring, and that's something I feel like will always be kept on my top shelf for there to remind me and to reread and just learn from it again and again. And I feel I feel like that's a really beautiful. It was like a sad note. See him, Barbie. I was like, yes. Yeah. I was like, I love seeing him and like get more roles and just expand like different types of things he does. So, yeah. This is the biggest thing that like in school. Especially going to school in India, I had to just always read the book and repeat what it said. Even if I didn't want to say or say it in a different way, they'd be like, your answer's wrong. And if it's like, when you're younger and you hear that for like, for I think like for, for five grades, so six grades for six years, over time, I, I like noticed only after I came to the United States that like, wow, I just don't want to tell my opinions because I would feel like it's wrong. And that became my, like, known mindset on seeing the world. So I wouldn't say things even if I had, like, oh, I had a cool idea. I'd just be like, unless they ask on me, I'm not going to say it. And for the longest time, I didn't even know I was doing that. And then I got to the stage of this is what's happening. And now I'm at the stage of, like, no, it doesn't matter if it's a bad or good idea. At least it's worth kind of sharing in a good way, not, like, you don't want to be too aggressive. But at least voice it out there. And the hardest thing that was for me to do was to tie writings is because it required you to think on what, what you read and how it applies to life. For me, I would be like, this is what I read and this is, I'm just going to say it back. And that's what, at that moment, I like hated those and the teachers would try to explain like, you know, the goal of this is to get you to think here for yourself. And now I see the point. But if I had more time, like my brother, he went to school in Texas. So he had like the experience from writing these, the starting and the different type of education. Sometimes it's like, oh, I didn't get that. But it's also nice to see, like, I can always ask him and see the different viewpoints at the same time. Yeah. yeah. I know you went to school not only in Texas, but other places as well. So how was that experience? I think the biggest thing was just people, really. I was, I started off in Jersey. That's where I was born. I was there until halfway through elementary school. But then coming down here, I felt like it was a very much more rigorous rigorous education system which I greatly value a lot like looking back on I'm so thankful that we made the move down here and in my younger sisters they were able to get most of their education here in Texas especially in the Katy area 
which we spent a good amount of time in. That's where we also graduated high school from. And the system and the people, I feel like there's a lot of diversity, a lot more diversity than up north. At that time, it didn't feel like, you know, it was as much. So down here, it's like nice to see all the different people, all the different faces and all the different cultures coming together. I feel like you learn so much more from that. You learn to appreciate that, which is greatly needed at a younger age, especially in the world that we live in with the problems we face in the recent years. And, you know, I've always wanted to see people come together. So I'm glad that I was I was shown to those different cultures and faces. So what it, what is it like living with two other siblings? I know I have one that's just like, it's fun. We don't usually fight, which is like sometimes people say like that's strange because I know people who are like, we're always fighting. You're like, I hate that guy, you know, yeah. like the love hate way. But I'm like, no, we don't really fight. We would just play like WWE when we were younger, where we just like fight for like to make it seem like, oh, this is our fun game. And definitely like my brother got more hurt, but not too bad. <laughs> But now I was like, yeah, that was dangerous. Like, we should not do that ever again. Yeah. And now at least he's older, so it's like, we can do it more fun. And it's like, he's not going to get hurt. You, you? you definitely hear a lot about, like, sub- sibling rivalry, but it wasn't quite like that for me. Like, like I mentioned, you know, we grew up with a lot of responsibilities, right, with the business that we had. So we spent, like, most of our time at the business, like, right after school. And so that was that was our way of spending our family time. And basically, there was no time for any, you know, any any extra like any extra BS, you know, it was just like cut through it. Right. We had these responsibilities. We had to take care of it. And me being the oldest, I I kind of grew up as being like their second mom. So I took that I took that into I took that into care at a very, very young age. And, you know, especially when we were younger, you know, you can't just go from the school to the business like right away so sometimes in between I would take care of my younger siblings I would wait for them to be finished with school because we would all have different timings right too and so I took on that responsibility very very early on and so kind of instead of like thinking like oh like they're my competition which a lot of people feel like they're with their siblings they were kind of like my kids and even now so like I treat them as if like they were my own kids and Obviously, it's natural to have a little bit of like rivalry here and there, but I feel like we matured very, very early on. And so that's helped us. That's helped shape who we are. And we just talk to each other like adults and we spend most of our time at work. And that's our way of spending time together. And sometimes it just feels like we're talking from one one business owner to another (laughs) business owner and coming together. So I'm really, yeah, like it was... It was definitely tough because it felt like there was no like childish play or anything like that of sort. But now thinking back upon it, I feel like we gained so much from it. So I'm definitely really grateful for those times because at this age, yeah, we're still very young, but we're very mature. And it's a lot more fun that way, too, I feel like. No, I think that takes like not everyone can do that, which is like shows your strength. In a way that you don't have this exact, you know, normal child way like all the time to just play or do whatever you want. But even though whatever you got, you embraced in and made the most of it, even though it's not like ideal thing. And that also is kind of what's like sets your experience apart. So it's like even more interesting. To me. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, I'm definitely grateful for it. Yeah. I know you said travel was one of your passions as well. So how has that been going? I know this year you definitely traveled more and yeah. looking like it's on the uptrend. So how, how are you feeling that change from last year to now? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I feel like for me, everything ties back to my childhood. You know, we didn't, we were, I come from a family of workaholics. So that's also a great part of who I am. But for me also, because I got more into photography, I just wanted to open up myself to the world. And I feel like the best way to learn is to talk to other people and have conversations, go out there, see for yourself what's happening in different parts of the world. I feel like if we're always stuck where we are, there will that will always hinder our growth. So I feel like that's extremely important for everyone and even for the future. When I have my own kids too, I want to make sure that I travel with them, even when they're babies, because they open up their eyes to the world 
they expand themselves without even them knowing yet, right? I feel like that's like a really like important thing. So I just kind of made a deal with myself that, yeah, I do like, I do like doing this. And so, yes, I stick to my strict work schedule, but also like certain times of the year, I want to be able to step out just for a handful of days and just see the world and expose myself to different things and different cultures and different people. And I mean, as you know, it's been going pretty well. I started getting more into traveling from the last, I want to say the last like two years. And especially this year on, it's now more hitting the international level, which I'm so excited about. We just had a really fun adventure a few months ago together. So that was a really, really, and a really amazing experience for sure. And there's like a few more coming up and I just couldn't be more ecstatic for that. And I feel like that's definitely going to make myself more aware and learn more about this world. And the best way is experience, right? If you experience different things, that's the best way to learn. So I'm really excited about that and just capture people, capture different moments and capture the world. Yeah, I definitely say there are still people I know who haven't traveled anywhere. And sometimes it's like it's like tough when it happens. But I don't know. I feel like every time somebody does that hasn't before, even if it's like going to two cities across the state or to a different state, as like a st- small step, they realize like, well, like, I didn't know this was here or this was so cool to experience. And I thought everything was just exactly how it is in my city. But now I that I've been to a different one, what is it like in a different country? Especially for creative stuff. souls, right? Yeah. I feel like even if it's one thing that we do here in America, it could it could be the same thing. Like, for example, if you're if you're eating, right, we have a way of eating here. But if you go to maybe South Asia or some other parts of the world, even like Asia, where there's like so much heavy culture, you go, you eat, you take the same dish and you eat it a different way. But that's how their respect is given. That's how they connect with their food. It's different, you know, but you're doing the same action, but there's different techniques with it. So that is an example of just one thing. But even if it's talking, how you talk to different people, how you go to different different religious centers there's different ways of showing the action that you're wanting to do right and so if you don't travel if you don't experience for yourself you won't really know and for creative souls like the best way is to is to expose yourself to different things and that definitely boosts your creativity at the end of the day yeah i feel like if you're a student listening or even less like if you're working or you're in your business whatever think of it as like you're but you see your reality is like a box and the box stays the same and the walls just only get stronger and stronger if you don't travel or even doing different experiences that are out of the norm. It could be like you never do rock climbing and maybe you tried it. So that makes like a small hole in the wall in a good way that you're seeing what's out there that's unknown and slowly that you realize that your box is expanding to cover more things. Until like, there's no box. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to eventually disappear. Then you realize like, oh, there's so much. Then you'll realize to the point there's like, you don't have enough time in the world to see everything, but you want to make the most of what you can. Like, you, I wish we could, but it's like eventually life is short, right? That's why I say like, what is that? Life is going to pass you by if you don't stop and look around. Yeah. And so I say like, stick around every time I get too lost in doing one thing. I'm like, is this the really most important thing? There's like. Sometimes everything. it's all about the scenery. You just got to change that. And then you can, instead of like looking from, Within yourself, you can look outwards in. Yeah, what I try to do is, but it's not happening recently here, but in college, when it was like, I had to figure out like my own routines and everything because it was much harder than being home because then you know like, okay, the dynamics of like family, what's happening, you know where you're going to eat or when everyone's going to come together for some, just like a break time or something. But in college, I decided that if I saw a really cool sunset, I would just stop on the side of the road or just go somewhere where I can just like take it in and then go do my next thing. Without the timing restrictions yeah. and being stuck to that schedule. Especially we lived in this one place where it had like 10 floors and I knew for sunset time, I just like tell my roommates or if I didn't want to come, I just go to the roof and just watch it. Yeah. It was just like a super small thing, but I, every time I did, it was like a nice, like the sunset is so nice. Like I can't believe like how the people down there just like, on their phone and missing it. Obviously, I've been that person at times where I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot what I was doing. But 
as the way to break that pattern, I had like a nice chance to just take the nicer, natural things, which is our phones are good, but they're also very bad. Right. But that's the thing, right? It's so interesting to see. Yeah, there's so many, there's so many people and all of us are so different. The way that we would see the, the see the sunset as an opportunity to just watch it and experience it. Others might not might not see it that way. They just think, yeah, there's something that happens all the time. And so their eyes aren't open to that. So the way we look into life is also very different. Right. So Yeah, I feel like new experiences are the best way to change that. And one of my friends told me if you see if you're always doing something and you're not feeling that slight excitement but also like the slight fear then over time you realize you're kind of feeling just like meh about life or it's just passing by but that feeling while it might be uncomfortable is also some is also something that's pretty cool because of that kind of is like what makes you feel alive for us it was in one of our ships where it was like super cold the weather was like insanely cold and easily could have been like oh i can't do this or like i don't stay in this much cold or back home like i would have had a nice warm you know i just have to sit at home and i feel i feel like yeah if we were back home Dari, I know that one occurrence that you're talking about, I'm sure that you wouldn't have been as ecstatic to it just because you don't you don't like the cold as much like yeah. that. But after that experience, you definitely felt like, oh, no, like this actually it hurts, but it hurt good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm baptized. Just kidding. You don't say that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm now <laughs> if you have allergies, this is not a medical diagnosis or recommendation, but Cold help, just cold therapy, just for like, you know, it could be all, all on their episode, which I think I'm going to make it, but. You know, we should do a part two, just about that experience. Yeah, no, that definitely could be. I like tell this to my mom as she still doesn't agree, but there'll be a lot of times I think kind of like wrapping it up is the way like schools are set up, not even in just here, but in other countries as well. I feel like they'll tell you this things are only a certain way. But eventually you will kind of just wake up, quote unquote, and realize that that's the way that is the average way or is set to make you follow a certain path. But you can choose to be different. You can choose to pursue interests that nobody else might have in your friend group. But somebody somewhere in the world definitely does. It's just a matter of finding them. So you don't got to find your people. Yeah, which is going to be very hard. It's not easy. I've talked to like a bunch of different people on Twitter about it. And they're like, it's not easy, but when you do, it is a nice feeling that like, no way, like we have so many similar things that I didn't think anyone would or I thought I was weird. But in a way, being that weird or slightly strange is what makes you different and unique. So don't lose that because there was at a time where I was like, why do I like these random things? I shouldn't be doing this. But now I'm just like, why don't you have like your own cool things? It could be knitting, for example. I definitely hate that, but it's cool when I see someone who can tell me passionately or is interested in it. They could just tell me about it, and I'd be like, oh, that was actually cool. Like, I'd have no interest in this, but because you told it in such a fun way, and I love it. And one example is actually one of my friends loves sugar, like talking about sugar, the sugar mill, sugar factory, anything about that process, which is so random that I was like, I didn't know this about him, but we saw like this building about a sugar factory, and he like went off for 10 minutes talking about the process of sugar how it comes, what's important. And because he was so happy telling about it, I was like, you know, I don't care about sugar this much. But because you told me in such a fun way, I'm actually like finding this awesome. So it was something just to remember that you have everything a chance. And you know, actually, you know, this friend, it's something. Yeah. <laughs> but it's something. Yeah. Be um, open minded and you'll never know what you will find. Yeah. Or what you'll attract. Yeah. As a final round we have these three final questions which you can answer by one sentence or one word right okay so the first one is what is one thing you think that the world needs more of that we don't have right now it could be anything right it could be like something you're seeing often or something you're thinking about or something even as simple as like more wind and Really hot places would be nice when it's super hot, as like an example. Thanks. I'll use a word, and it would be acceptance. Oh, actually, I want to more about this, so you can go like a little bit. More. A little bit more. Yeah, this is 
So this kind of ties into what you just said a little while ago about being open-minded and letting yourself be who you are naturally without holding back. And we're in that we're in that phase of life where and the times of life too where a lot of people are being a lot more upfront about who they are, but at the same time we're not fully there yet as a world as a community to accept that. So I feel like it's every day it's a constant battle. There's something or another on the news about someone doing a certain thing, whether it's who they are or the actions that they are, the actions that they are allowing themselves to do. And then there's a lot of other people on the other side either accepting it or most likely rejecting it and arguing back and lashing back on who they are, what they just did. So if we had more acceptance right now, I feel like that would make the world a much, much better place, less hurt, less less violence, and a lot more love. And I think acceptance is the way to start with anything. That was a pretty good one. I like that. Okay, the next question is, what is the worst advice you've ever got? You're too young to understand this. So... We should hire a professional team. (laughs) So that's something I've heard a lot. I think as soon as you asked that question, there was a time just this past summer, actually, that someone said that to me in a very direct, in a very rude manner. And it actually, I don't let a lot of things get to me professionally in that sense because we also we all we all are built different as well, right? Not just because you're talking to somebody doesn't mean that they know your backstory and what you've gone through. So I don't let get I don't let that get to me professionally. But this sentence, like coming from this person, it really did because it was a nice way to put it, it was basically an attack because of one being being a young woman and also like the age was a factor as well right and so they didn't know that this is something i've invested a lot of my time in just educating myself about about the certain business proposal that we were that we were going through and it it definitely got to me after that i felt like super super down I needed a lot of consulting from my dad, which is usually the person that I go to, right? He's my mentor. He's my guru in all aspects of my life. And I needed that validation from him that, no, like, I didn't have to accept those words that were just thrown in my way, right? That they were thrown directly at me. And, yeah, it took a while. But right now, like, almost a year later, I'm glad I didn't sit there and just accept those words, right? I I stay true to who I was, and I believed in the experience that I had, and it naturally allowed me to flow where I needed to go. Yeah, that definitely. There's, like, words that somehow you think, like, nothing can get to me, like, I'm very good about it, but sometimes it's, like, well, I don't know why that sentence or, like, the way that somebody said something it just, just gets. And it's hard to tell because sometimes you don't even know what it is that, is gonna do but the best way is like yeah you said your the experience over time you had help you have to believe in yourself you have to have that confidence because at the end of the day if you don't believe in yourself then no matter how hard you'll try you'll never get anyone else to so you always have to be your own cheer- cheerleader no matter how small you're starting what's the final one is what is the best advice you've got so we can handle the nice <laughs> That the sky is truly limitless, right? And so that ties into all of your goals, all of your dreams, all your aspirations. There really is no end point. You know, you just have to keep going. Like we'll have a goal that we'll set today, let's say for this upcoming week. Okay, after that's done, what's next? There's always something that's next. So you shouldn't ever, ever write the final, like the final conclusion of your story. There's always more as long as you allow yourself to keep going and to keep leaning towards that strength, you can always do it. 
I think that one is definitely true because I feel we limit ourselves the most. And sometimes you don't even know you're limiting yourself unless like somebody helps you or kind of guides you in a way that maybe you're just blocking yourself or making it too hard than it has to be. So that's why having like good friends or even just mentors is something that's very important. Very important. To have. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on this episode. There's so much more we can talk about and would love to do the so in the future. But if you had any last questions for me on anything you wanted to say, this is your chance to do so. No, well, thank you so much, Sid, for inviting me on to be a guest on your platform. It was it was really fun. And our conversations are always so inspiring and motivating. And I feel like it definitely our experiences. Everyone has different experiences. And I hope that this helps to anyone who's listening, anyone who's wanting to start off on whatever they're that they have that they're passionate about. And yeah, I'm just so grateful to be sitting here and having this conversation with you. So thank you. And yeah, until we talk again. You've been listening to Pure Entropy. Thanks for listening to this podcast. It really means a lot. I appreciate all the time. Take it out of your day to give it a listen. If you'd like to support further, you can do so by leaving us a review on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. See you in the next one.